we are uh, personally uh, relieved and thankful uh, that the patient uh, who contracted this virus is improving uh, and may well be going home soon. Uh, we will continue to keep uh, the patient uh, and all of those who may have come into contact uh, in our prayers. Good afternoon and welcome to the News Hub. I'm Michael Casey. The Governor of Indiana, Mike Pence, and the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta confirmed the first instance in the U.S. of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, also known as MERS, appearing in Indiana in an individual who became ill after traveling back from Saudi Arabia where he had been employed as a healthcare worker, but he's now improving. What is the syndrome and what kind of a threat does it represent? For an answer, we are joined by Dr. W. Ian Lipkin, Columbia University School of Public Health Professor of Epidemiology. Uh, Dr. Lipkin, thanks very much for joining us. My pleasure. So first up, let's just walk through it, if you can, in the simplest terms. What is MERS? MERS is a respiratory syndrome. It's not unlike uh, many other respiratory syndromes. It begins with fever, a cough, and some people it progresses to pneumonia. Uh, and to renal failure, and in 30% of cases, as best we can estimate, it turned, proves to be a fatal infection. So, um, and, and how is it contracted? That's less clear. There are some in examples uh, in healthcare settings where we know people have been exposed to infected people. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but most cases are really not explained. We think that some people may become infected because they're exposed to infected camel milk or camel meat or come into contact with camels because we know that in Saudi Arabia there's a very large number of infected camels and we and others have been able to obtain virus from these camels and to demonstrate that it's identical to the viruses that we obtain from people. So uh, there's no concern then that this particular patient might be contagious in some way? Well, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that patients are not necessarily contagious. And there are examples that I've said in healthcare systems where people have become infected as a result of exposure to infected patients. Now, we know much more about how transmission occurred during SARS, which was due to another coronavirus, a virus similar to this one. And in that instance, we found that when people uh, receive very aggressive pulmonary care, nebulizers, the other things that are used to improve their ability to oxygenate their blood, that there was an increased risk of transmission to other people if the appropriate precautions were not taken. Hmm. Now, in this particular instance, because there has, we only have one case, isolation has been feasible, and we've jumped on it, that is we, meaning the, the people who are taking care of this patient and the Centers for Disease Control, we have excellent containment. And I'm confident that we should have this under control. Now, there is some concern about people who might have been exposed to this individual prior to his being placed into isolation. Uh, and so what's typically done is that we monitor those people who've come into contact with this individual for 10 days to two weeks to make certain that they don't become ill. Now, so that's what's being done. Okay. Uh, now, I understand, though, that 30% of those cases in the Middle East, uh, people have died who've had this, um, and yet um, it does seem as if at greatest risk are people who have got some sort of pre-existing pre condition in terms of pulmonary um, vulnerabilities. Explain that if you don't mind. So this is not uncommon with many, uh, many viral infections and many bacterial infections. The people who are most at risk are the people who are vulnerable. But vulnerability can represent a wide range, everything from obesity and emphysema to people who are immunocompromised because they've had recent transplants or because they have cancer or because they have renal failure. But as a rule, people who are somewhat compromised in their health status are going to be more likely to have an, a bad outcome if they become infected with this virus. All right. Well, we'll obviously be monitoring this as it goes. Dr. Lipkin, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.